visual arts. Um, I've been studying photography and um, uh, I graduated this spring uh, from uh, MA in photography and that's kind of photography is the starting point for my work uh, but I also work with text and film and um, sound lately with like music as well and I've been kind of trying to uh, expand my practice into more interdisciplinary ways using also like uh, performance and uh, yeah whatever I feel like suits the story that I want to tell or um, kind of the creating kind of different types of narratives mm. and my recent project is called Are We There? Um, it's something that I started to work on 2019 um, officially actually a bit before that um, uh, it started out when um, 2017 my grand aunt Kirsti uh, passed away and uh, she left behind this like old album of photos and also like old uh, music records like LPs and all this stuff and I started to go through uh, the material that she left and um, she used to live in Brazil for 40 years and she was part of this group of Finns that moved to Brazil to build a utopian community there in 1929 and um, also my great-grandparents were part of this group as well and but Kirsti is like the person that I knew personally uh, better and sort of my connection to this theme of utopia migration. So I started to go through Kirsti's old photos and got to get to know better like the history of the migrants uh, back in those, those days and I got really in interested in the story uh, and I also had Myself, I had lived in South America for a couple of years or before that, so I kind of felt the connection to to the continent, but as well as the story, and I wanted to really get to know better, like what was behind all that. Mm. So this group of Finns moved there in 1929, as I said, and their mission was to build a community uh, in the tropics and to live in harmony with nature and kind of in a self-sustainable manner and uh, build this vegetarian lifestyle and like just um, be able to eat fruits that weren't available in Finland during that time for example. Mm. So they found this old uh, kind of coffee farm uh, close to Rio de Janeiro and um, they bought this land and a piece of like old monastery from the locals and they settled there and started to work with the land and uh, built this kind of community in there uh, but and they had kind of high ideals of how um, a human being should be or a human being could live in harmony with nature like they tried out nudism and other kind of <laughs> Uh, 
these free ideals. Um, but it was hard for them uh, because uh, there wasn't always enough food and they didn't know exactly how to work with the land and they didn't have previous experience. So it was really an idealistic project. And in the end, um, they had to find new ways to make income. So they turned the place into this kind of little Finland and started inviting Brazilian tourists there to get to know the Finnish culture and sort of, um, yeah. Um, after the 40s, I would say that became like a business in there. And now it's a completely different kind of place, kind of this small Santa Claus land in the middle of Brazil. Um, but yeah, that's not maybe the focus in my work. What I'm more interested in is like um, investigating the utopia that these migrants had because I relate to it myself. I, um, for me, nature is something kind of very essential for my well-being and being able to be um, in the outdoors and kind of um, connect with my environment. So uh, that's what I started to investigate uh, with this project and um, also the idea of kind of longing for something distant and how well this connects to the concept of saudade which is known in the Portuguese language and uh, kind of how that feeling creates this uh, motivation and kind of catalyst for creating something and migrating or making decisions and and things like that. So I started to shoot this project um, in Brazil in 19, uh, 2019 and uh, I finished the shooting last year. Um, but it's still kind of an ongoing process. It's not still finished, but um, I had to get something kind of finished. So last year I made this handbound photo book, dummy, that's called Are We There? And uh, it has uh, around 60 images um, and um, 116 pages, if I <laughs> remember accordingly. Uh, and in the book, I use uh, some of the old archival images from my grand aunt's album that I've turned into risograph prints um, to sort of empathize the nostalgic look and kind of this passage of time. And um, I combine some of the old images with these kind of colorful light leaks that have been created during the process of shooting a new material that I was shooting. Mm, and this kind of uh, alludes, or what I've tried to do is to allude to the material uh, nature of photography and how it is kind of just uh, images of light and um, not always representations of reality um, and how do how we could kind of question that that it's just a kind of materialistic process <laughs> yeah there are some uh, images here um, and um, then I also use these new images that I've shot in the old village. And um, when I first started to work on this proce project, I kind of had this idea in mind that it would be a documentary project. But then um, when I was working on it, uh, I started to feel that the documentary way of uh, <coughs> Telling the story is not um, the most, the best way to say what I want to say. So I started to 
uh, build more or create more like a staged photos such as this and then I also felt that um, because of my personal connections to the place I kind of felt that I should include myself in in the story or in the photos so there are some self-portraits for example this one is, is it's like a sequence um, of a sort of a performance that I shot <coughs> on 8 millimeter film and then took film stills of of the film <laughs> um, so yeah um, this is the story about the book mm, and I also use some images of my aunt's diary kind of these uh, diary entries and there are some drawings as well and some poems and uh, uh, songs in it. Um, so then um, one of the works that I produced here during the residency uh, is this uh, risograph print. Well here it's a poster uh, but there in the gallery wall it's kind of this um, nine piece installation of that I cut out of this poster and uh, here you can see one of the um, one of the old images that I've made into a risograph and kind of I played with the opacity of the image to kind of make this fading effect and what I um, want to kind of say with this is about uh, kind of, well, this is called um, memory of a landscape. Uh, I've done previous versions of this image as well, so it's kind of one other version of it. So it's about this fading time or fading memory of something and kind of this passing of time and yeah, also about longing as well, which is really a carrying kind of force uh, behind this project. Mm, and then I can maybe show the painting in the dark room. So um, this painting is called Beda Serra. Um, it's kind of inspired by this place um, in the old colony where I used to uh, live while I was making this project. And uh, it's a place um, in the middle of this Mata Atlantica, Atlantic rainforest uh, area. And it's really biodiverse and kind of sister forest for the Amazon and it kind of made a really big impression on me. Um, and um, with this work, it's kind of uh, this memory of that feeling and sensation of what I saw and experienced while I was there. Um, so it's an acrylic painting on canvas. Mm, three meters times one and a half meter and uh, well I would say this is the main work that I've been working during working on during this month and um, it's also like one of the <laughs> um, motivations or the inspirations that got me uh, working on this was um, some of the former migrants that were living in the old colony, such as Ela Ambula. She used to do these like really big uh, tapestry works uh, about, about the environment there. And they often included uh, like tropical plants or um, like tropical birds and very like colorful stuff. And actually her works are pretty like, I wouldn't say very known in Finland, but um, kind of known and uh, there are for example 
I think in Brazil in the Finnish embassy as well as in Finland in the Brazilian embassy or something like that they both have like her works really big presented there and uh, she she used to be like one of the closest friends of my grand aunt back in Brazil so I've been seeing some of her images for a long like some of her works and also this other uh, my grand Toivo Suni, who used to live in the colony as well, he was a painter and um, he kind of painted also these images that were inspired by the Brazilian nature and people and the village. And um, my father has some of his uh, paintings in his home, so I've been seeing these paintings since I was really small and I didn't even know what they were about but they've been like I don't know I think they've been they were one of the first paintings I ever saw in my life so like some of the aesthetics is really there I think so I kind of wanted to touch these two former artists somehow with this piece or like um I had their works in mind, but I didn't want to copy their works. I had kind of something else <laughs> in mind. Uh, but then I started to work on this and it kind of took, um, took many turns. And it's, this, is, <laughs> this work tells much about process and like trial and error. Um, so um, what I was, so what I think was uh, I, I didn't mean to sort of allude to the works of the former artists, but it just is there, and I think it's very obvious. And maybe it's the way um, that we see the place in a way. But I think it's through the colors and the contrast where the connection is to is found. So, um, yeah, uh, I used acrylic mostly here uh, with a different kind of, um, um, like, <laughs> materials using sponge and then dripping the paint there. And you mentioned the name, what was the name of the place, sorry? Peda Serra. Peda Serra. So it's the food of the mountain and it's the kind of the house where I lived in is called that. And, and the settlement, what's the name? Did you, I don't know if... I yeah, the, 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 the colony is called Penedo. Penedo. Yeah, it's between Rio de Janeiro and Sao Paulo, more or less there. In this very mountainous region with a lot of rainforest. Because uh, I know in Brazil there were many utopian Yeah, trials. yeah, yeah. Very famous work uh, turned into a war. That's the most famous work of Brazilian literature, as well. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I know they still have it, and there's a lot of evangelics in South America. So <coughs> they went there in '29 mm -hmm. to found mostly. Was it? Did they have any kind of religious? Yeah, they were or? Christians. Yeah, so they had some Christian values in the okay. background. Yeah. Yeah. But so today it's not, uh, it doesn't really have anything to do with No, it. no. And today most of the people who live there are Brazilians or yeah. there are some descendants of the Finnish people as well. But it's very Brazilianized nowadays. Like Finn, Finn Park maybe. Yeah, Park kind of, so. kind of, yeah. But there are still some Finnish people with Finnish heritage living in there, yeah. And this was painted from memory, kind of, or...? Uh, no, it's just, uh, yeah, like an image that I had in mind. Yeah. Um, and I used some references of like this kind of abstract um, forest uh, images, but it turned out really different that I had kind of referred to. <laughs> mm. But yeah, I'm, and it's also, I chose this big format because I felt that, um, well, for some time now I've been working with, mostly with photography and uh, 
uh, because of my studies as well and working a lot with the computer and small screen <laughs> recently and like this everything happens here so I really wanted to like uh, do something without screens and uh, just with colors and also uh, this big format I felt like um, invited me to engage in more in this uh, kind of bodily and corporeal uh, <laughs> process uh, that kind of also affected how the work looks um, and uh, yeah it's kind of this liberating thing to do something big and uh, kind of also this purifying process of just doing something with your hands instead of a machine which yeah I really enjoyed <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you have any questions or. Yep. Well, I think it's very something very natural for us humans to try to reach like a better state of life and uh, uh, to kind of try to um, how do you say like form our, our lives in a way that we could see ourselves um, in the future or try to affect the future and kind of build a better future. Um, and, um, uh, well, I think, but utopia, in a sense, is something very unreachable. Well, there are many literature works about utopia, and, like, what is written about it is when you reach a utopia, it ceases to be a utopia, so it's not that anymore. But there's always, like, it kind of runs away while when you come closer to it. Uh, so it's kind of a uh, utopia is something utopistic to <laughs> reach or it's kind of unreal but I think it's very important as well to think sometimes in a utopistic manner because then maybe it builds builds like these ideas for having um, goals or like reaching something we want to achieve and um, and I think already when we imagine these ideas that we want to achieve uh, we kind of start building the way towards them um, but yeah I think these migrants were very idealistic but I think it's still something that could happen even today and I kind of one of the reasons why I started to make this work was that I was like I would have gone with them <laughs> like uh, I really yeah 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 and there are still the funny well I don't know if it's funny but the interesting thing is that there are still the same <laughs> same kind of ideals like that were a hundred years ago and now that we want to find this connection and harmony with nature and if we feel like 
that could uh, easily make our lives better, or I, at least I feel like that. And uh, yeah, without even, I didn't even know about the migrants yet, but uh, that time, but I've been vegetarian for 10 years and I was like, oh, like, <laughs> there are some connections. Uh, yeah, no survivors, no life, like someone who was a boy at the time. Oh, sorry? What? There are no, like, original settlers still alive. Um, no, I think the last one died a couple of years ago. So, like footage and other documents besides this kind of personal. Yeah, there are. Um, there's a lot of archival material. There's a, a migration institute in Finland that has documented a lot, like photos and writings from there. And I think there might be. There are some, like very old documentary films from the colony as well. Yeah, like the Finnish pro pro broadcast company uh, Ule has uh, in their archives there are some films from from there. So yeah, it's kind of it's kind of uh, a known uh, place in a way. But I don't uh, I don't know if there are many there are no like documentary photography projects from there really or anything recent art artistic also uh, when you do the new community you escape an open so in 29 Finland what was you had yeah Finland was like in this post-war era and they were afraid of a new war with Russia so that was I think that affected some of the migrants that they wanted to uh, go somewhere far away from Russia. <laughs> and then something that hasn't really changed. <laughs> but, and, uh, and yeah, and also it was uh, like the economic depression. So, so there weren't, for example, fruits much to eat. And uh, also I've read that some people were like, suffering with the Finnish climate, as we always do there, so <laughs> so they wanted something more in, to live in a friendly climate as well. Yeah. Can I ask you a slightly tangential question? Like, um, I really like the verse of this painting. Yeah. Is there something you could say about that? Because it seems quite like icy to me. I don't know, there's something... It seems like a very different climate, or it's very subterranean. And I just wondered if you had anything uh, like about the, the yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the front too, but like I like that you've done something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it um, seems very, like, the temperature of it is different. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, uh, well, with the positioning, I had that kind of in my mind since the beginning. Um, I think with that I tried to make it more like an object, like a 3D uh, object instead of just a wall or just like a canvas, but to be more like in the space, creating space. And also with that I think uh, it changes the dimension of the image. So the upper part seems kind of bigger than the lower part when you look at it. So I wanted to play with that as well a bit. Yeah. It also feels quite site specific. You know, there's something about that particular space and, and the way that the reverse kind of enters, like you then feel somehow like you're in it. Mm. I think it's really specific. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this space is also very special in a way. So I think it fits nicely there, yeah. <coughs> I wonder if you could articulate a little bit more uh, your interest in the, this community, in the sense that I understand that you're not just trying to um, deal with a historical mm. material. Maybe it's not just about it. And I sense there's something that um, well, maybe you're not able to articulate it yet, but there's mm. an interest that I would like to hear from you. What, what does it give to you, you know, this community? I guess you meant. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think, uh, well, like, finding alternative ways to live in, in this world. I've previously as well, I used to live in Buenos Aires and I was documenting there this community, this like eco-anarchist community <laughs> that were kind of living outside the society. And um, maybe this is in a way the same interest that I have, kind of finding, breaking out from, uh, I don't know, from very conventional ways of living and kind of being imaginative <laughs> and uh, and yeah well the connection with nature is something it's uh, uh, like the human nature and how we all are kind of nature <laughs> and not just humans but part of the nature and how when we, how we could or we should realize that to maybe connect better and uh, like live better and uh, yeah so that's been one of the most like motivating forces for me to like understand what they wanted to experience back then but also this sort of um, nostalgia I am really moved by nostalgia and nostalgistic things in life and uh, for example these old photos and my memories from my aunt are something that create this kind of longing feeling in me um, and I felt like even before I went to Brazil I was already like longing there I was having this saudade to for Brazil, <laughs> even though I had never been there, but I kind of was somehow already living it through my through these photos and through my aunt, because I re I have these very vivid memories of her. Um, well, she came back to Finland when she was in her 70s or a bit later. And uh, like one of my last memories of her was uh, she was really, she had Alzheimer's and she didn't even remember um, anything much more, but she would still play the guitar like Bossa Nova and singing Portuguese. And I was, I think I was 13 then when I heard her sing and I was really like, ah, it was really something magical for me to hear her uh, in a city like Tampere in Finland where no one sings in Portuguese, <laughs> maybe now someone does, but but yeah that uh, and she became this kind of, I don't know if I would say role model, model but definitely something that I was like thinking about a lot uh, while growing up and how I wanted to learn to play the guitar as well and I wanted to learn to speak in Portuguese and she was this um, kind of woman who was walking her own path and uh, and a kind of brave person so I think that's been also something subconscious that I wanted to get to know better her and like uh, because I was identifying myself with her somehow. So, yeah, I think that and the connection with nature has been the forces behind everything. I don't know, it's very complicated in this 
sense that as an European developer, yeah, yeah. you think it's free, yeah. but it's not. Definitely. And uh, I, I, I don't understand it. Yeah, it's... But they're a little bit disturbing in there. Uh, yeah, I know. Not, not in you, in the, but in, in the idea. In the Definitely. About talking in Tokyo and this place. Yeah. Another place to go. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It's not. Uh, I've been writing about this for my thesis because I felt like it's definitely something I need to open up. And also because when I started to work on this project, I was really questioning this utopia migration and if it's like legit or not, and if it's good or not, and blah blah blah. Um, so it's definitely not completely unproblematic. Uh, because, uh, well, South America has been colonized and there are devastating consequences that colonization has created there. Uh, so, and there is this thing that uh, being uh, white European and going somewhere in South America to build your own place there, of course, uh, there are many connotations to colonialism. Uh, but at the same time, mm, yeah, it's really hard to say if it's something um, good or bad, or I don't know, I'm not even the person to say that or answer that question. But um, also, like while I was working on this and thinking about this a lot, then I also thought that um, Mm, it's well their intention was good and they didn't colonize like anyone they didn't colonize people I don't know if they colonized nature <laughs> uh, for their own benefit that's something we can think about uh, but um, but um, they went there with peaceful intentions and they bought the land from locals. They got locals' support for the project. Uh, and um, like nowadays, for example, locals are really, uh, I would say, benefiting from the, from the place because it has created a kind of growth in the, in the specific place. And also there was this, uh, it's surrounded by this Itachiaia National Park, that was um, Brazil's first national park, so, and it was like established after the, the Finns arrived there. So I think they also brought some attention to the environmental aspect there. Um, but yeah, um, but yeah, it's, it's not a, it's kind of, complicated um, issue and um, but um, but yeah I've been also well I was to talking with locals there and uh, talking about this uh, well in Brazil there are many many colonies like Dutch German all all of those so um, but uh, what I've heard in this specific place that um, many people have been like telling me that it's great that the Finns came here because before they came this place was like wasteland there was nothing in here and now there is something but um, yeah <laughs> I don't know it's kind of this but the aspect is outside your work for now. You, see, you mentioned your thesis, you, you think about those issues, but for this yeah. work that you do, it's yeah. not necessarily... Yeah, it's not, not the main focus. Yeah, focus no, I'm, yeah, I'm talking more about this. Um, it's more about my trip, my, uh, and my interpretation of memory. utopia so and memory and, uh, my intention to build connection with the past and like between past and present. So yeah, and I also, 
Like it's easy to think, for example, in the book that I represent Brazil as this uh, exotic and tropical place where everything is like <laughs> ah, <laughs> perfect or something. But uh, I think, and I've got this comment from people before that don't you think that you exoticize Brazil and the nature there, uh, for example. Um, but uh, I think that is not my point and that's also, I'm not representing the place. I'm not representing the, I don't, I'm not really representing Penedo. Uh, I'm telling a story about a utopia and also about my own story, about my own longing. And um, it's more of a personal history than a representation of Brazil or the place. So. Yeah. And I think that's clear from your artist's book. Mm. It's very intimate and but the material and the qualities of it are very strong. And yeah. It feels like it's something very personal. It doesn't feel mm. like you're trying to create some kind of ideological mm -hmm. yeah. distance idea that it's really like it's very really like very intimate. Yeah. There's something I was reading. images, I almost longing for for the past. It was as if traveling in the 1930s to another continent, to the rainforest. It's not how it is today. Mm. Even if we do it, uh, this romanticism, it's lost. Right? And I think coronavirus really makes us understand how globalized we are and how everything is, is connected and reverted by by the new one. And mm. But yeah, it was just what I want to just put an accent on this historical also longing. Mm -hmm. For me, it's, it's there somehow. It really reached me. Yeah, yeah. I want to be back in time in a rainforest. I mean, it's it's from mm. certain places. Right, we're traveling. Uh, maybe the you know, conclusion would be that you know, after this process of being here, I think it's a lot more it's coming up after, uh, like, I think the painting with the new technique of being exploring yeah. uh, what we see and uh, what we are practicing in the near future. In the near future. Well, um, I think the most acute thing that I have coming up is a solo exhibition in my hometown in Tampere, like my first exhibition there, so I'm kind of excited to bring this project to my home where the whole migration started from and to be able to show it to my family as well. Um, so working on that exhibition there uh, is now in my plans. Probably I'll show this painting there and maybe some risographs and then try to somehow add my images, like other images there, maybe some film, uh, like uh, eight millimeter film that I shot there. So building that exhibition and then also I'm planning to start shooting a new project in my hometown, in my childhood home. And um, it's uh, kind of this continuation for this project. And uh, um, it talks about um, this, my home forest or where I grew up and how the landscape there is changing because of logging, like really extensive logging and how I feel like uh, through this landscape, kind of my sensation of my old home and kind of childhood memories and this feeling of belonging is changing. And this also well, connects to the idea of um, how we create identity through um, the environment that we live in. So kind of my identity is really bound to that forest as well somehow and now it's like 
I go there and it looks completely different than it used to be and I don't, re I don't recognize where I am anymore and I'm like, where is the path? Like, I don't see it. <laughs> so I'm like lost in my, <laughs> my uh, comfort that used to be my comfort zone. So, so, um, so I will talk about that in the, I think, well, this year the, in the work I will start working on. And um, and yeah, maybe finding new pro ways of uh, making images. Um, I'm planning to make these Anto type images, like using local like berries and leaves, collecting them there and making this uh, like light sensitive emulsion out of that and making images of that and kind of finding ways to produce cameraless photography as well as kind of these nature um, or non-human uh, non-human um, particles or like <laughs> um, things that can also create narrative to the work or kind of like what I would like to is kind of um, give voice for the <laughs> surroundings there and, not, um, and kind of somehow not only talk about my own anthropocentric view of telling a uh, telling story which is not easy for <laughs> but um, kind of trying to listen to the environment and uh, give it some voice there and I think yeah what I would like to uh, do as well is to keep like shooting moving image and uh, yeah definitely photographs will be there as well so and uh, I think performance and yeah <laughs> like this and also uh, yeah practicing more of these uh, interdisciplinary ways of telling telling uh, Telling the stories and yeah, yeah, kind of trying to advance my or kind of develop my skills in other uh, mediums as well than not just photography, but really wanting to expand it. Yeah.